you go, oh, he, he must be Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. And yeah that's a common mistake. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and then as well with that, um, also a lot of, uh, you know, notorious, uh, a lot of lineage, I mean, as far as the Machado brothers, mm -hmm. um, you have some training as well with them. How did, how did that come about? Yeah, the, uh, so when my father first started learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it was from the Gracies, and then he met the Machado brothers in California and really loved training with them. Um, and then Carlos Machado moved to Dallas, Texas. Um, Chuck Norris actually brought him there to continue his own training uh, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, and he was there filming for the Walker, Texas Ranger show. And so Carlos became the first black belt, um, really just black belt at all, but especially of that caliber, um, to come to our area of the country. Um, being from Oklahoma City, Dallas was, you know, about three, three and a half hour drive, which isn't close. Like, I mean, it's close, but it's not like in our city. Right, of course. But uh, much better than going all the way to California, which is what my dad was doing prior to that. Right. Um, and so Carlos really like changed the whole landscape of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in our area of the country. Um, now, you know, Texas has tons of Jiu Jitsu. Uh, of course, Texas is a huge state, but um, you can trace a lot of the you know, the people that are there now that have been there for a long time, they, they pretty much all go back to Carlos. Excellent. Um, so he was the first one in our area of the country, but uh, a few years later, I ended up uh, competing against Saulo Hibero um, in 2004, who Saulo was like a legend of the sport, yeah. um, one of the, the, you know, best world champions uh, of his era. And, um, and after competing against him, he invited me to train with him. Um, and so I began training with, with Salo, and that really, actually that was 2003. Um, yeah, I was just 19. And uh, that really was like a huge life-changing um, opportunity. Um, and he is who I credit like, you know, all my accomplishments inside of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu too. Yeah, absolutely. And your father was integral to getting you started in martial arts, of course, and even into introducing you to this man as well, correct? Um, actually, I met Mauricio uh, through jiu-jitsu. I was teaching a seminar um, at a, a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school here in Toronto that he used to work at. Um, he was uh, the Muay Thai coach inside their, their academy. Mm -hmm. And um, I was uh, you know, told about him prior. Mm -hmm. uh, people said great things about him and his brother, how awesome they were at Muay Thai. And so I knew that when I went there, I wanted to train with him. Um, but of course, I didn't know how it was going to go, like, you know, and, um, you know, when you hear the stories about him and his brother, sometimes it can be a bit intimidating. Um, and, you know, it's just, you know, a uh, different world um, coming from shoebox and everything. So, uh, but we met each other and we trained and immediately I fell in love with his style. He's such an awesome guy. And uh, we just hit it off. Um, and he also loves jujitsu as well. He loves to learn. So right from the very beginning, he was teaching me. I was a student and then I was teaching him. He was a student and we just had this, um, you know, reciprocal relationship um, for all these years. And uh, he's one of my uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts now. Excellent. And for those who are unfamiliar, when you mentioned shoot the box and a little bit of intimidation. So that's where fighters like Vanderlei Silva and the Hula brothers came out mm -hmm. of. Um, so Anderson Silva, Anderson Silva, Chris Silva Cyborg, yeah. and uh, the training, you know, then was a little bit, you know, uh, different than it is now, mm. perhaps a little bit more. So, so when you say intimidate, just for some people who might not be as familiar, what do you mean by, you know, you, you felt a sense of intimidation into uh, uh, perhaps dealing with uh, with that? Yeah, pojada, that's their word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. They, you know, they're notorious for like going pretty hard uh, and sparring all out um, back in the day. Now it's it's better, but I would say they're still uh, like in Curitiba where Marisa's brother uh, runs the team. Um, you know, Evlu Saltai in uh, in Curitiba. Um, you know, they still I would say train harder than most camps. I mean, you know, I don't want to say harder, but like not other other teams train hard, but um, you know, it can be a little more intense. So, um, you know, there is a lot of sparring. Okay. Uh, and for me, it was good because, you know, coming from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I was in my comfort zone and I needed to get out of my comfort zone to be comfortable inside the cage. And so, um, you know, the, the style of training in Kuchiba, I appreciated 
because I had never been in a real life altercation and I'm, immediately I was fighting guys that had two times, three times, four, even five times more fights than me okay. um, because they were moving me up so fast coming from all my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu experience and so you know I'm fighting people that have so many more fights but I had the training in Curitiba and the training in Curitiba I feel like elevated me and, and helped me uh, progress that much faster because it is more intense and you know it's not like we're fighting to hurt each other down there but um, you know it, you are definitely in the fire you know yeah, and uh, and so um, it helped me feel more comfortable and confident going inside the cage for, for my actual professional fights. Excellent. And you pride yourself on being uh, a true martial artist both in and out of the cage, which is something I find uh, very admirable uh, to the point where the 10 professional fights you've had, you say, are the 10 fights mm -hmm. you've only had in your life. So with that being said, a lot of times, you know, you take your licks in, in sparring. Uh, can you right. recall a time either, uh, you know, rolling with someone or, or striking where, you know, you got hit with something or perhaps, you know, twisted in a way where you went, oof. Uh, I mean, like that. Well, yeah, I mean, I have, I've had some injuries. This was from jujitsu. Oh, wow. Um, this right here, this scar right under this eye, this is yeah. Van Vanderlei Silva. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Vanderlei. <laughs> A little bit of axe murderer right there. Yeah, right there? Okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely had some, some tough days, but that's that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, like, accidents happen, you know, and you, of course. you can twist or fall or bang heads or whatever. Um, I had broken nose once uh, a week before a fight uh, just super random someone's elbow just nicked my my you know the bridge of my nose yeah um, you know nothing intentional it, it happens you know um, but that stuff can happen all the time most of the time you know my students for example when they get hurt it's because they decided to play basketball one day or you know <laughs> they're cutting the grass or they're playing with their kids and they didn't stretch and warm up and they just did something crazy or, right some sort of skiing, snowboarding, whatever accident, you know. Um, so usually when people get hurt, it's because they're doing other stuff, you know. Certainly. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, some things happen. Yeah, there's definitely been some some hard days. Yeah, definitely. And and with uh, you know the, the three ugly words that are kind of making their way into all combat sports, CTE. Um, that's a conversation that, that seems to be happening. As a fighter, is that something I would, I would imagine? Obviously, not every day you reflect on that, but is that something that you know, you try to, you know, you think about your future, you know, how, how do you feel about that uh, in general? Mm, I mean, you really don't think about it. Like, you can't preoccupy yourself, you know, you just focus on on the mission and, uh, you know, um, anything can happen in life, right? I mean, you could just, boom, be in a car accident or whatever. Yep. Everything can always change very fast. Um, but I definitely, you know, with um, Professor Mauricio here, just like, Every time we put together our game plan, our strategies for the fights, it's never to go in there and fight like a rocky fight. You know what I mean? Um, that's the last thing. You know, we're we're both very much on the same page. Just, you know, we're going to try to go in there and fight as cleanly as possible, take as little damage as possible, and uh, always keep the person inside my world. And that's why I'm really lucky um, to have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on my side. Um, you know, because when when we're on the ground, for the most part. Um, you know that's my world and i can i can usually get things done you know nice and clean and easy down there um and that i feel like you know uh, can help me have a prolonged career if i wanted it if i want to sure. um i mean up until my last fight i really hadn't taken any damage in any of my fights before so um so far so good yeah absolutely and i want to talk about that last fight which got you this lovely piece of hardware here um, so going into it, obviously, I mean, every fight is, is the biggest fight of your career. Um, but with that, it was tenfold. Not mm -hmm. only going into your first title fight, well, I mean, in a major organization, mm -hmm. I should say, because obviously you know you won with Legacy. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, in Bellator, you know, it's, it's you know, big time television. Um, going against mm -hmm. Gegard Mousasi, who, uh, I mean, a legend in the sport. Um, I mean, long back when you were kind of winning jiu-jitsu tournaments, he was kind of doing the same in MMA, oh, right? Yes. So, so walk me through kind of mentally, are you saying, you know, okay, status quo, I gotta just keep on going? Or are you, are you taking that mental leap as well, knowing that, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big jump in competition for yourself? Yeah, I, you know, um, every fight is dangerous for sure, you know, like you said. So you can't, you can't wrap your head around, um, you know, oh, this is the biggest fight ever, 
the, of course, I, w I was extremely motivated. We worked so hard. Um, but at the same time, it was also just sort of business as usual. You know, we're always very professional. We always understand the risk of every fight. Anything can happen at, at any time. And at the end of the day, we're all human. You know, everyone's human. Everyone has their weaknesses. Um, you know, I think for us, this time was really more just about like, uh, sort of more internal almost, just realizing uh, so much of our work for, for all these years and really having a, a strong sense of gratitude, uh, a lot of love. There was a, a lot of love flowing through our camp uh, between he and I and also everybody else um, that, that has been a part of this journey. Um, and just, yeah, a lot of love and gratitude is what really, I think, put us there in, in a place where we were ready to go much farther than, than I feel like what my opponent was was uh, was wanting to go, yeah. you know. Um, and so when things got got really tough out there, um, it was easy for me to, to dig deep and, and, and go that extra mile. Um, and so that was really it. I mean, as far like Masasu, we have so much respect. He's a, uh, a very complete martial artist. Uh, he's so relaxed, you know. And uh, it was definitely you know my biggest challenge. Um, you know, there's there's no way it was going to be an easy fight. You know? Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, like, throughout, we were always very confident, and uh, we, you know, we believed that we could shock the world, and we yeah, did. Absolutely. And I like how you mentioned how you had to dig deep, because that's something I wanted to get into. First couple rounds, taking him down, having a lot of success, um, you know, advancing positions on him. In the third round, there was kind of a key moment where you go to take his back. Um, he ends up reversing <laughs> position, land some ground and pound. How are you feeling at that moment in between rounds three and four, um, and and after rounds two? I'm assuming you, you did you know you were up those two rounds going yeah. into the third. So yeah. so going to that, you're feeling pretty good. After round three, what's your mindset at that point? Um, well, you know the first 13, 14 minutes of that fight were almost perfect. Yeah. Uh, we were doing everything we trained for. Um, I was a little bit surprised at how well he defended uh, off his back. Um, I thought I would not submit him easy, but I really thought I would, I would find a way yeah. to, to, to catch him um, or at least do more damage. And, uh, you know, yeah, but he's Musasi, you know, and he's been there before with so many high level competition. Um, and he's also a very technical, uh, he has very technical jiu jitsu. Um, he has good jiu jitsu. Um, and so he was impressing me, and actually I was getting a little tired. Um, all the locking of the hands, the squeezing, the takedowns, yeah. and just holding him down. And you um, have a relentless style. You're constantly going for finish. You're constantly, you don't, you're not a guy who likes to rest either. So yeah. you're really working out there. And he was too. He was always, I could feel him ready to get the space to get it back up, yeah. you know? And so I had to be very perfect uh, in all my positions. And uh, yeah, I was starting to get a little tired in that third round. I'm on his back and things are going good. But there was a point where I needed to work a little more and I sort of settled when I needed to hustle. Gotcha. And he got a good wrist control and he shook me off and now I'm on bottom. And then he had sort of the life come back into him. Yes. And uh, he started making it rain on me. And, you know, uh, it is what it was. Nothing really like hurt, hurt. I mean, you know, I got cut. Yeah. Um, but I've been cut before in training and stuff. and. So it was just like, and then other fights have been cut. It was just like, not too big of a deal. But then um, going back, you know, I, I wasn't too, like between rounds, I wasn't too out of it or anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was my first time to go fourth and fifth round. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was still feeling good. Um, I wasn't thinking in my head, oh, it's two to one or whatever like that. Right. I was only just concerned with what was next. What was next, yeah. Um, but uh, in the fourth round, what really happened is, the blood was affecting my, my vision. Gotcha. And uh, one time he actually kind of poked me and it, it smeared. So I got poked in my good eye and then blood smeared across my cut eye. Um, and that's when I couldn't see and I kind of like just yep. ducked down like this and he got me that's with the good uppercut. With the uppercut. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, you know, it hurt, but I, I more fell because I couldn't see. Course. And I just wanted my legs in front of my face. Yeah, yeah, which is where you're, where you're yeah. most comfortable, yeah. oddly enough. Yeah, and so instead of standing there and just swinging wildly yeah. and getting, Chris, Chris getting, getting hit, you know, I just 
I just thought I'm gonna fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and which helped me, you know. Sure. And it was total instinct, um, but it helped me get my wits about me and uh, and take a little breather as well, because he didn't want to. He kind of came in a couple times, but then he would always back up. And, uh, I think he was tired too yeah. as well, and he was down to rest when he could. Um, but uh, yeah, the fifth round was just like, you know, Mauricio pumping me up. Uh, my other other uh, coach in the corner, just you know, look one more round. You know, this mm-hmm. is your life is coming down to one round, oh, right? Really, really no, yeah. Really, right. And so, yeah, I just uh, we touched gloves and I smiled at him yeah. and I said, okay, five more minutes. You know, let's go. That's that's amazing because because it's like you said uh, at that point in the third round. How do you, if you hold that position? I mean, it, it could have just been, you know, status quo the rest of the fight. Maybe you went and it's go, oh, what a, what a dominant performance. But to see you go through that adversity, uh, you know, have to come back from that. After two, two rounds in, a, like, not the, the beginning of the third round, but the last half of it and the beginning of the, mm-hmm. of the fourth round, like you said, you, you looked fatigued. And then to come out in that fifth, it was like, no matter what, you're like, I'm getting this takedown. And not only took him down, but you were threatening him with, with a choke almost the entire round as well. So I was trying. <laughs> you, you, you dug. Was trying. You dug deep. So that, that was that was very very cool. Though. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I scene. mean, on one hand, it's like, uh, we made a lot of mistakes. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like technically, you wish you would have done things better. And there's a lot of things technically that um, I could look at and say, got to got to work on that. But uh, uh, you know, if it would have been perfect, then we wouldn't have this other thing where it's like, uh, you know. At some point, you have to go through that, yeah. you know, um, and it's always about okay, how are you going to respond, you know, and I think uh, you know going into my first championship round, someone at that level, the fight going the way it was going, um, you know, if it would have been perfect and I never would have got in, in trouble or whatever, right? Okay, awesome. But then the fact that it wasn't, and we rose to the occasion. Um, gives us something a little extra to be proud of. Absolutely. Um, and a little something more moving forward, too, to be confident about. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Knowing that you can go to those deep waters and, uh, and come out on top and, yes. and, and looking great. Yes. Um, so what do you think it is next? I know Musasi and Machida are matched up. Mm-hmm. Um, are We're you, basically just waiting for the winner. You're expecting to see the winner of that? Yeah, do 100%. You, do you have a, a, a preference? Uh, you know, Machida would be nice. I yeah. spent seven months of my year thinking about, Already thinking about him, Musashi, yeah. so uh, getting to go against another another legend, someone that we respect so much, um, you know, a true martial artist for sure, Machida, um, that would just be fun, you know, it would be amazing, um, but either one is fun, yeah. it doesn't matter, yeah. uh, if it's Musashi again, then it gives us a chance to, you know, put more of a, of a period next to this and say, okay, this is it, it's over. You know, we're the best, and um, and then just keep knocking out the challenges from there. But yeah. um, Machida would be would be fun. Yeah, I figured you'd say that, knowing that you're a true martial artist. You know, I'd kind of like to test yourself yeah. against. Everybody and I've only out had there. ten fights, so you know, uh, if I fought Masasi again, that's literally twenty percent of my fights have been with Masasi. <laughs> right. You know, right? So <laughs> getting to fight someone else would be. Would be nice. Of course, of course. That's excellent. That's excellent. Uh, no, and we will be looking forward to uh, to when you do do that. Uh, two last very serious questions. Do you like my mustache? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. can I get a follow back on Instagram? <laughs> sure. 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 Okay, of course. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. So here we are. We're with the champ, Rafael Lovato Jr. We're at Evolu so Evolu Sal Thai MMA gym here in Toronto. 333 Spadina. If you guys live in Toronto, this is your home. The best coach in the world, best teacher in the world. He'll change your life. All right, come here, get started. It's for everybody, okay? You don't have to be a fighter. We love to teach the everyday people and uh, help you guys realize your potential. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. O cinturão é nosso! Hey. <laughs>